What's going on Halo fans? My name's Luke the Notable, and in this video, we're gonna be dropping Halo Reach 100 times. I know it's been quite a while, but now the entire Master Chief Collection and Halo Reach is available on Steam, so I decided to drop 100 times. So you might as well hit that armor lock, cause we've got 100 games coming up. I dropped Halo Reach 100 times, and this is what happened. So here we are, game number one, and just listen to that Halo music in the background play. I just decided to go with some free-for-all, it's one of my all-time favorite playlists in Halo. Unfortunately, we're playing SWAT though, and that's only for fragile and feeble men. Though I will say after 10 years, playing Halo Reach at 240 frames per second was pretty magical. So even though I'm playing the worst playlist in all existence, SWAT, I was still having a pretty fun time. I feel like Halo's been pretty dormant for a while, it's been over four years since Halo 5 released, and seeing Halo Reach on PC was definitely a nice change of pace. But this was my first game, and it was SWAT. So even though I played pretty well, I didn't win. That's alright, I played pretty good, and it's SWAT so it doesn't count anyway. However, in game two, we're playing some actual Slayer. That's team deathmatch for all you Call of Duty degenerates. You don't die in one shot in Slayer, it actually takes a little bit of brain power. Interestingly, I ended up matching this guy, I pwned to win, who won the last game of SWAT. But now that I had a little bit of shields and more than a half second to react, I was gonna definitely win this game. Yep, you need 25 kills to win, and by the time I got there, the next closest guy only had 16. I slaughtered him, and I pwned to win came in last, which is a point of pride for me. Game 3 is another Slayer match, and we're playing on the Hingham High remake, which is one of my favorites. At this point, I was just excited to play anything in Halo Reach. It's been so long since I've played this game, and it's so smooth in 240 FPS. And yes, I'm playing this on a controller, but Halo is meant to be played on a controller. It's the only way. And in this one, by the time I got my 15th kill without dying, I thought maybe I could go for the perfection. These guys must have came from Apex Legends, because I outclassed them at every step. The next closest guy had 9. And as I went for the final kill to secure the perfection, I oh no! That's okay, like a responsible adult, I hucked a grenade into a crowd of people and was able to win the game before I assassinated this guy. And I'll take 25 and 1. Game 4 I had the sword, and got a ton of kills with it, which is weird. I thought Call of Duty players were used to getting knifed. I was able to use up all 10 shots of the sword, and got myself the slice and dice medal. But in the end, I didn't need the sword. I used my sniper, and of course, no scope was involved. Oh, uh, try not to vomit, guys. Game 5, we're playing SWAT again. It was a close match, me and the second place guy were tied for pretty much the whole game, but I won. Not that it matters, it's SWAT. I just figured this out. Apparently you can turn off SWAT, so I don't have to play it anymore. Awesome! So instead it looks like we're playing some free-for-all snipers, which is immeasurably better than SWAT. And this Halo Reach matchmaking system gets me really excited. You can definitely have it your way. Don't want to play SWAT? Then don't play it! But after a long hard battle of playing with only snipers, I didn't win this one. Oh well. That's okay, we're gonna redeem ourselves in another snipers match the next game. Hang em high snipers is probably the easiest version of snipers to play. You just gotta hold the high ground and make sure to hit your cross map no scopes. Then follow it up with a triple kill for the sharpshooter. I'm not sure how, but I absolutely dominated this game, and in the end, I ended it with a respectful teabag. I'm still in the free-for-all playlist for game 8, I was really loving it. It's nice having to only worry about yourself. I pulled away early in this one, mostly thanks to some expert shotgunning, but in the end, there's no way you're gonna succeed in Halo only using power weapons. You've gotta be good with the pistol too. You know in Halo, you gotta be able to kill guys in multiple different ways, and I did that here, 25 times for the win. In Clayble for game 9, we're playing some Fiesta. Fiesta's still free-for-all, but you spawn with different random weapons each time. And yes, I am the real Luke the Notable. In the flesh! Fiesta isn't necessarily a competitive game mode, you're mostly just hoping to get that rocket launcher. And while not necessarily as effective, a sniper will work just as well. And a gravity hammer is very effective. If you're going up against the invalid, Fiesta's a great change of pace from regular Slayer. Sometimes you gotta beam a guy and punch him down, which is just totally different from normal Halo. The best gun in all of Fiesta is easily the fuel rod. It's like a rocket, but on steroids. And here, I got my first overkill with it. Unfortunately, the clip is pretty much ruined thanks to the chat being open. I'm just too famous. This was a close match, but thanks to that overkill, I was able to get a pretty good boost, and I was able to win this game with a nice simple DMR shot. Game 10, we're back to playing free-for-all, this time with only the intervention. Yes, that was a cock and booty reference, and I promise it'll be the only one. Another close game here came right down to the wire until I shot this man in the skull. I can't play free-for-all the whole time, here we're in big team battle, playing some more snipers. By this point, I pretty much had my shot dialed in, so when it came to killing these blue players, it was pretty easy. Worst part about big team battle, though, is it doesn't really matter how good you play. If you've got a bunch of mouth breathing, on your team, there's no way you're gonna win. I killed every single player on their team with absolutely no remorse. And even though I ended this game with 30 murders, we still lost. Well, I guess we're playing another sniper match in game 12. There's no way this will ever get old. At the end of the day, I really don't have a right to complain. I could turn off snipers at any point, and I think I will after this one. I wasn't the MVP this time, but I definitely helped. It is a team sport. Game 13, we're cramming 16 players into hang em high. There's no way to lend peacefully. These are the type of matches I live for, though. Just good, clean, chaotic Halo fun. I played well, though, killing several players up
up close, so I'll remember them in my dreams. But when the dust settled, I had 25 kills and was the MVP of the losing team, which is just the story of my life. Game 14, we're playing Elite Slayer, which is just a testament to all of the different fun you can have while playing Halo. If you get bored of regular Slayer or snipers, you can have some fun rolling around in a ghost as a dinosaur. And because we're devout servants of the Covenant, we were able to crush these heretics, and we got a stake-tacular. Oh, I was also the MVP. We're playing a little bit more Team Rumble in game 15. Not much happened. Mostly just snuck up on guys with numbers in their name and killed them before I got killed. I really tried. I was killing as fast as humanly possible, at least as fast as the DMR Bloom would let me. And by the time the game was half over, I could pretty much tell I was going to be the MVP, but of the losing team. Yep, I got 27, and only two other guys on the team broke double digits. Before game 16, I spent some time and interacted with the armor unlock system in Halo Reach. It works a little bit more like Fortnite's Battle Pass, like everything else in the world now. No use coming up with original ideas if you're porting a game to PC that's already 10 years old. With my measly level of armor customization, I was able to get my Spartan to a good point. And now we're hopping back into free-for-all. I'm the only thing I need. It was a very close match, but because I'm a smart man, I was able to hold the high ground and snipe. Yeah. That's fine. Later on, I was able to get a two-for-one with one sniper shot and comboed it up for the triple. And now with a sizable lead, I was able to use my jetpack and pistol to win the game. We're gonna play some oddball in game 17. I love playing with my balls. In this game mode, eight men fight to the death over the privilege of holding the ball. And my balls are so deadly that you'll die on contact. Hey, there's no playing with your balls in the bathroom. Oh yeah, I got way more. Like these players, I bet you all want a piece of my balls. Unfortunately, in Halo, you have to use both hands when holding the ball. There's no such thing as a ball sack. My ball handling skills are supreme. So at the end, I only had to touch the ball for one second to get the victory. Now that Kappa's off our case, we're back to good old fashioned rocketing in game 18. This was another close one and I fought pretty hard, even though you get about the same amount of XP for like second place. Things were going pretty great until I committed explosive suicide. And by that point, the guy in first place got a pretty sizable lead and I wasn't able to make the difference up. And I lost. But like I said earlier, it doesn't really matter. This is our XP, comrade. It's time for some Beaver Creek Battle Canyon, whatever you want to call it. This time we're playing Boom Ball, which is oddball, but the ball sometimes will randomly explode. Just like middle school. Everyone also starts out with the Halo Reach grenade launcher, which is definitely a fan favorite. Me included. There isn't really much strategy to it. You kind of just run in and hope you don't die. Also, make sure to fire grenades randomly into as many civilians as you can. I didn't win, but, you know, it's Boom Ball. Who cares? And we're going to keep the party going with Fiesta in game 20. Most of the time, the person that wins the game of Fiesta is the person that gets the fuel rod the most times. However, in this one, I didn't need the fuel rod. I used my sword to assassinate this player and win the game. I did end up teabagging him, but he was dead, so he didn't feel it. Game 21, I started off with an absolutely colossal lead, mostly thanks to some helpful sorting. Nothing too spectacular happened. I didn't get anything higher than a double kill. But you know, at the end of the day, it's always nice to end the game with a snipe. Huh, the guy with the weed gamer tag came in last. I wonder why. Game two, a rival player got a quick lead thanks to a shotgun, but now he's obviously dead, so it's my time. I just realized I called this game two instead of game 22, but you know, it's close enough. This is another one of those games where I didn't do anything too spectacular, but I still played well. I stole a lot of kills too, and in the end, it was a fairly close game, so I just finished it with a sword slash, and then jumped off the map to my death. Game 23, we're still playing free for all, because I can win these games in about four minutes. It's pretty good XP. You know, I'm still a little taken back whenever I see TTV gamer tags in Halo. I'm used to guys like this, emo killer 43761. Anyway, this one was close, but not that close. I ended it with a nice little quick scope. Game 24, I was playing Juggernaut. It's free for all, but one person is on fire and has a giant hammer. And now I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. I then went on to slaughter an entire family of Spartans. There's the overkill and I'm just getting started. I got the Kilimanjaro, there's the Killtastrophe, and then right as I was about to die, I got the Killpocalypse. I was just sad I didn't get the Killionaire. Yes, I am the real Luke. Pretty soon after the game ended, Crazy Juggernaut won the game. Ironic. Game 25, I employed the expert strategy of sitting behind a corner and sorting people as they walk through. You really gotta be careful on this map. You never know who has a sword or a shotgun. Good try, Alvin789-2857, but today just wasn't your day. We're gonna play some Dino Blasters, whatever the fuck that is. I still don't really know what's going on here. All I know is you have unlimited jetpack and whatever this gun is. I mean, I guess it's sort of a nice mix-up from regular Slayer, but it definitely gave me a splitting headache. I think this should replace the MLG playlist. Yeah, that'll be better. I lost. This is the saddest moment of my entire life. Game 27, the competition wasn't too steep, as you can tell by this guy sitting on the turret. Don't do this. I was neck and neck with this guy Laser Pulse until I killed him here and employed some psychological warfare. After that, his childlike psyche couldn't keep up and I easily took the lead. Teabagging is an ancient Halo tactic that can work in many different ways. And this win, I attribute to it. Again, using the sword in game 28, I was able to take an early colossal lead. And after porking this guy for the running riot, I knew I could get the perfection here. Oh yeah, we're doing good. There's the rampage. That's 
it's 20 in a row. And right here I got 21, but while going for 22, I had to reload and didn't get the kill. You know, it would have been nice to get the perfection, right? But at the end of the day, I guess I'll take 25 and 1. I absolutely slaughtered that lobby. And you know, I think I'm gonna slaughter this lobby too. I'm really starting to hit my stride. Oh yeah, check out these kill stealing skills. Very nice. I was just trying to put this one away quickly. You get more XP that way. No one was even close. And we got some more Fiesta in game 30, and as you can see, I already have the rocket launcher, so it's going well. This one was a very tight game. Of course, that all changed once I got the fuel rod cannon. This thing's insane. But somehow, of course, I ended this one with a very simple DMR shot in Fiesta. How weird. I started off game 31 by playing pretty well, though it is the start of the game and anything can happen. I immediately knew something was up when a bunch of people started quitting all at once. The anti-cheat activated. I must have been playing too well. Interestingly, in game 32, I never touched a single power weapon. Not because I didn't want to, I just kind of forgot. And this is the map countdown. There aren't really that many power weapons to begin with, so it didn't really matter. It was still a close game, but using my pistol skills and kill stealing skills, I was able to get the win. Now it's game 33. The video is one third over, just like my life. And you know that's assuming I make it to 72, and with all the G fuel I've snorted, I really doubt that. I mean, best case scenarios, I die in the next couple years. It'll galvanize this whole series. Anyway, at the end of this one, I had the sniper rifle and the rocket launcher. So of course, it was an incredibly easy win. After about two minutes in game 34, I was already the clear leader of this lobby. And as the supreme leader, my favorite activity was missile tests. My subordinates in this match never even came close. I won this game easily. Game 35, we're gonna play some Invasion. Invasion is a game mode in Halo Reach that pits elites versus Spartans. It's very racist. You'll get a chance to play both the elite and the Spartan side, and in this match, I was the elites first. And I was able to use the filthy human's own technology to get some kills. I really appreciate the driving, gay. For some reason, Invasion is a ranked game mode in Halo Reach, so I was level one this match, and these guys were absolutely terrible. So this match, we very easily stole the core and got all three points as the elites. But now it's time to be humans. The elites were able to take our first objective, but if I'm being honest on this map, it's pretty easy to lose that first one. I was also able to get myself a Banshee. Good thing those Grand Theft Auto skills are kicking in. We were able to stop him in the third phase. You've got to take that bright, shiny core all the way back to your ship, and they weren't able to. Worst part about this match was I wasn't able to spawn in Gay's back seat. Game 36, we're playing a little more Invasion. Again, I don't know why they made this a ranked game mode. I was level two, everyone was terrible, and I did most of the work. I said most of the work. I got it almost there. Round one is the humans is basically D-Day, but more fun! The elites got as far as the second round, but we stopped them there. I was on the other team. Game 37, we're back in Invasion. It's very fun, and I can feel myself becoming addicted and dependent. Now I'm going up against guys with the grand total of level three Invasion, so it was still totally easy. Yo, loop the notable, bro. Fucking go closer to the ground, dude. I just keep spawning and dying. Sounds like a you problem. Game 38, we're playing the same map, and we were the elites first round, and I'll show you the best strategy ever, right here. Near one of the objectives, there's a rock here, and if you hit the evade just right, you can go right on top of it. From this vantage point, I could easily cover both of the objectives, and none of the Spartans were able to get close. This first round, the Spartans didn't even take the first objective, so we skunked them, which is a real medal. So because I'm the greatest of all time, literally all we had to do to win this game was take the first objective. And we just did. Congratulations. We could have just coasted the rest to the game, but instead I went 28 and 40 because I enjoy human suffering. Game 39 was the first invasion game that I lost, but even my own team was aware of how bad they were. After that loss, I decided to play some zombies because it wouldn't be a Halo Reach video without some zombies. There's essentially two versions of zombies in Halo Reach, one where the zombies are pretty easy to kill, and one where they're- Ah! You know, in this one I probably could have played better, but I didn't do too bad for my first day. Game 41, we're back to infection, and I'm the last man standing this time, and just like my grandfather in the bathroom, I stood for a little while, then fell. I was a zombie from the beginning beginning in round two, it would have been better if I just went and made a sandwich. But then in round three, I came back with another good round and even got myself an overkill. And despite my horrible round two, when the pestilence settled, I actually won the game. Still an infection for game 42, and after this zombie killed my last teammate, now I'm the last man standing again. No big kills in this one though, I lasted about two more seconds. The rest of the game I spent mostly in this tree, like my grandfather's enemies. Last man standing in round three, and as you can tell, it got pretty bad pretty quick, but I was able to survive. And I was able to win the game. Look at me. I played another game of infection and this time I started off as a zombie for two of the three rounds. What? Come on, guys! They can't possibly kill all of us! Anyway, that's enough infection for one day. For game 44, we're playing some 4 vs 4. I had three other teammates in this game, but it didn't really matter because I'm a professional. And after grabbing myself a running ride, I figured I could probably get a perfection this game. Yep, in the end, it was 50 to 14. We completely destroyed them, and I never died. Perfection! Still got about the same amount of XP as all those free
free for all games. I'm still playing 4 vs 4 in game 45, gracing random people on the internet with my awesome Halo skills. This game was a little bit tougher, but not too much tougher. I do this for money. It was close at the start, but by the end we pulled away. They gave up hope pretty quickly. The 4 vs 4 slaughter did not stop in game 46. We took an early 15 to 2 lead. Another one of those games where I didn't really do anything spectacular, didn't even get a double kill, but I played pretty well, and in the end we beat them by 21 kills, just barely getting that spectacular. Game 47 was an even match though, at least at the beginning. Here it's 21 to 17, though I think our team was a little more diligent and held the high ground in rockets more often. And by the end of the match we pulled away, and I got the last kill. I also gave him a nice little teabag. We're continuing the 4v4 fun in game 48 and I used the grenade launcher for its intended purposes. The Halo Reach grenade launcher takes a second to get used to, but once you've dialed it in it's pretty effective. And there's also the age old strategy of sitting behind a corner and waiting for people to come through. I was dead when we won this one, but we still won. Hooray! Game 49 I only had the advantage because I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that knew where the rocket launcher spawned. Also midway through the match I sniped this guy in the back and then about two seconds later he quit out from the match. I didn't think I could connect to the French servers but I guess I can. Anyway it was two on four so in the end we won this game 50 to 30. Just barely getting that spectacular. From the moment game 50 started I could pretty much tell we were going to obliterate this team without question. Yep I ended up getting more kills than the entire enemy team combined mostly because the entire enemy team had to go up against me. Yeah that was a pretty juicy O right there and I even almost got the kill tag. Like I said in the end we won. I got 29 kills and the entire enemy team only got 22. Game 51 we're mixing it up a little bit playing a little headhunter. In this mode when you kill a player skulls will shoot out of their body just like real life. You then have to take those skulls to the objective and score them. It's pretty simple. This mode's nice because not only do you have to kill but you also have to be able to take the skull and skull score it. Taken. It's a little more complicated than normal slayer and I'm pretty sure the enemy team was filled with Call of Duty players because they had no idea how it worked and we beat them 50 to 6. Game 52 I could tell the other guys recognized me by the way they looked at my dead body. We're playing King of the Hill this time around and like a true gentleman I actually went in the hill instead of just going for kills and by the end I controlled the most real estate for the longest time. Aha! Game 53 we're playing neutral bomb assault essentially there's a bomb in the middle and you've got to take it to your enemy's base and blow them up. I sat in the middle and made the blue team's life a living hell. They couldn't really push past the center line. I also ended up scoring all three bomb points necessary to win. I wish there were more of me. Almost immediately in game 54 I knew we were gonna win. One guy was AFK and another guy quit. Have my kids look Game 55, we're back into some big team battle because you know I feel like putting my entire ability to win up to basically chance. This time we're playing territories and the last one left is in this open field. I have no idea how you're supposed to get this. Well, apparently the enemy team found a way. Ugh. Game 56, we're still in big team battle and this time I'm using the Falcon, which is honestly not a great vehicle. I don't like any vehicle where I have to rely on my nearsighted teammates to shoot for me. Also, let's be honest, you're just sort of begging to get taken down by a rocket or laser. That was an easy triple for that guy. This was a pretty close game and I was trying to kill as fast as possible to make up for my low tier teammates. Now it's 95 to 95, it's anyone's game until of course I picked up this rocket launcher. Now it's 99 to 99 and with one rocket, I won the game. That one was close and really fun. Now we're playing big team battle, king of the hill on hang em high. This one's gonna get really massacre really fast. In this one I got a lot of kills really fast. I earned two separate running riot medals. And in the end we didn't end up winning the game, but I did get 45 kills and about the same amount of XP as if I had one. Not sure what possessed me to play infection in game 58, but I got zombie first round and decided to just make a sandwich. You can hate on me all you want, but I got some good XP and a sandwich. And somehow all I have for game 59 is the end screen of a very tense invasion game. We tied two to two. But look at me, I'm actually recording in game 60, playing some more invasion. Ironically, we tied two to two again. How weird. I'm playing more invasion in game 61 and thanks to my expert tank skills, I was able to hold the elites to only two points. However, when our team became the elites, we weren't able to take the first objective. We got skunked. And of course, I killed myself. It's a great dishonor. I'm going back to some free-for-all for game 62. I want to make sure that I only have to rely on myself. This one was close. For once, I wasn't in the lead, but I found out it was only because the first place guy had a sword. And now he's dead. Yeah, then once the fights were honorable, there was nothing stopping me from killing everyone in this lobby. And then teabagging them. And after the previous king tasted my sweet, sweet teabag, I totally pulled away and pretty much won the game easily. He got like two extra kills after I took the sword away from him. He deserves all of this harassment. Well, we're playing this map twice in a row. At least now I know not to let the noob touched the sword. Again, because I'm a professional, I pulled away from the very beginning and no one even came close. 25 kills and the next closest guy only had 15. Unfortunately, I played with pretty much the same lobby the next game, so you probably know what's gonna happen. No one could even touch me. I had the sniper rifle as well as the sword and a 10 kill lead. Oh, and a running riot. So now I'm chilling at 24 kills and the other guys have no chance at all. So I wanted to stick the last guy, but missed. 
Oh well, I guess I'll just punch him to death. Hey, it looks like I'm playing this map again. There's no way it could get old. I went up eight to two from the very beginning. This is not gonna go well for the other people. Come here, Devo 10. I wanna get close when I win this game. Oh yeah. Ah, where did that guy come from? I'm throwing around my mountainous halo clout in game 66 and we're playing with I Spiteful. Well, the first match is Duo's King of the Hill, which is a little weird, but whatever. King of the Hill has really long respawns, so if you can slay out a team, they won't come back for 10 seconds or so, allowing for serious point gains. The best strategy involves one player sitting in the hill and the other player guarding. So here I was sitting in a corner with the sword. We were probably gonna win this game anyway, but they just ended up quitting out. Game 67 is more King of the Hill duos. Why? We came to the mutual agreement to turn off objective game modes in the next match, but we're gonna have to play this one out. We also didn't have voice communication going. It was like 3 a.m. for me and my wife was sleeping and I wouldn't dare wake her. You don't really need communication in a Slayer game type, but in King of the Hill, it's pretty necessary. And because of that, we lost this game. That's okay though, because in game 68, we started by playing only Slayer game types from here on out. And we absolutely obliterated 25 to one. Spiteful never even died. I gotta say, that was perfection. Oh, in game 69, we were creaming these guys good. And we made a pretty good team. Even when I missed my shots, Spiteful hit his. And in game 69, we went up 16 to four before the other team just quit out. Game 70, we were playing on whatever this map is. I'm pretty sure it was the first time for both of us. Despite our inexperience, we quickly went up 10 to zero because we're professionals. There's two snipers on this map, but we didn't even know where they spawned. So imagine how well we would have played if we had them. We played so well, we got another Staketacular. Imagine winning by 20 kills in a game mode that only goes to 25. Game 71 was actually close at the start, but by mid game, we really started to pull away. These guys just didn't work as a team. Also, what are you doing rushing me with the gravity hammer like that? I can see you coming. They got about eight kills at the start of the match and it pretty much stayed that way. And by the end of the game, we didn't get the Staketacular, but we still played pretty well. 25 day deserves a celebratory teabag. We set the tone early in game 72. I grabbed the sniper and started using it. We were killing him so fast here, I accidentally shot one guy, didn't even mean to kill him. I then went down and killed the guy I was really supposed to kill. And in the end, I went for the final kill, even though it killed me in the process. This was probably the closest game we had. It was pretty tough from the very beginning. The spawns on this map definitely take some getting used to. Here I sniped a player, and then about three seconds later, he ended up spawning behind me, which is never good. We pretty much just went kill for kill the entire match. We were always neck and neck. We managed just a slight lead right near the end, and with a grenade, I got the final kill. That one definitely deserves some teabagging. Interestingly, we played the exact same guys in the very next match. Let's see how it goes. This one wasn't nearly as close, but they were still a good team. Got us on a couple good pinches for sure. Though once I grabbed that sword, it was pretty much over. Our lead skyrocketed. Not sure how, not sure why, but somehow playing the exact same team, we were able to win by more than 10 kills this time. We played against the new fresh team in game 75 and they felt our wrath quickly. Though our 14 kill lead didn't stop them from calling us trash in the chat. We were playing very honorably up until that point. Then we started teabagging. No, I get it. We beat you guys 25 to seven, but we're the ones that are trash. Trash. I understand. We knew all we had to do to win game 76 was hold the high ground, and we did that perfectly. Yeah, after a while, they kind of just blindly pushed into us with their jetpacks, and that's never gonna go well. We pretty much held the top of this map for the entire match, and won the game 25 to two. And it's already 10 to one in game 77, so you can probably guess how this one turns out. Yep, run out in the open with your assault rifle while we shoot you with our DMRs, that'll work. The only bad thing about this game is I was going for perfection and just totally choked against this guy with numbers in his name. I was pretty upset, but you know, not that upset. At the end of the day, we beat him by 21 kills and it's not like the perfection would have added to my XP or anything. I'm gonna be honest, by this point, it's like four in the morning for me, so Spiteful did most of the work in this round. I still got as many kills as the entire enemy team, which was seven, and I wasn't recording for game 79, but we obviously beat him. All right, this is the last one with the legendary eye Spiteful. Not a great start, but we did have plans to meme on these guys. It just obviously didn't work out. It took a while, but we were able to close the kill gap. Now it's 18 to 17, the first time we got the lead. Now there's 30 30 seconds left in the game and it's 21-21. We already know this one's not ending at 25. Using his shotgun though, Spiteful was able to kill both of them to make it 23-21. And from here, we just sat back, relaxed, and let the clock run down to win the game. Well played. Game 81, it looks like we're playing SWAT. Again, I didn't mean for this to happen. You know, this is probably a good a time as ever to play a game on mouse and keyboard for once. I'm definitely not a natural on mouse and keyboard. I've only recently gotten into it with Fortnite. But you know, if there's any playlist where the only thing that matters is raw accuracy and internet connection, it's SWAT. It just feels a little strange as all. I've been playing Halo on a controller for pretty much as long as I can remember. So playing on a mouse and keyboard is just a little bit different. Though I will say I almost instantly noticed an accuracy boost, at least while playing SWAT, which doesn't really mean 
mean much. It's SWAT. On my ninth birthday, my parents got me a DS instead of a GTX 1080, so that's why my aim looks so deep fried. Still got that triple kill. Again, excuse the terrible aim, but I was able to win the game. But it's SWAT, so it doesn't even matter, even though I kind of celebrated a little. For game 82, we of course turned off SWAT, so now we're playing some Slayer, and I asserted my dominance quickly. I was also playing a couple guys from the last round we just played. I'll be able to show them I'm the goatest of all time in both SWAT and Slayer. Oh yeah, I was the clear leader from the beginning, and that never changed until I won. I guess the Halo Reach matchmaking system thinks these players have a chance because they mashed me with them again. Of course, they don't. There was another player who was fairly close to me in the kill department. I think it's because he had a sword or something. But of course, once I took that away from him, I was able to kill everyone else in the lobby, even getting myself an overkill. So again, with expert precision and class, I nutted all over these gentlemen and even gave the most gentle of teabags. Sorry guys, it's not my fault Bungie thinks you have a chance. There's no way they'll match us four times. No, they matched us four times in a row. Uh-oh. I'll just skip to the end of this one. They tried, but of course, they never really had a chance to begin with. Yeah, I guess it is kind of insane how much I play this game. Hey, we finally got some new victims. It was a pretty clean game. Nothing magical happened. I just played well. And the competition wasn't too steep. This guy pretty much just jetpacked up to max height every time. And like this person, he was lucky enough to miss my sword slash. I figured there's no way he'd be dumb enough to go to the ledge, then I'd easily kill him. But he did. This is what I'm working with here. So now I've got 24 kills and two sticky grenades. But because I had a seizure, I missed both of them. That's fine. I guess I'll just finish it up with my pistol. And a very precise teabag. You can already tell I'm gonna win game 86 because I'm going up against players who use the ripped off turret unironically. I thought this guy wasn't playing. It just turns out he had necrotizing battle fright. I'm not sure how, but it took me about 80 games to figure out where the rocket launcher spawned on this map, but I can assure you I would have beaten these Call of Duty players without it. Game 87 was actually interesting. I was playing with some nose breathers for once. It was just close. No one ever really took the lead from me, but I'll give it to him. It was close. That is until I got the sniper rifle in high ground and then it was pretty much over. Actually, it was literally over. I just won. You know what I hate more than Call of Duty? People who use the active camouflage power. I just hate what it does to my radar. Well played, Big Booty Panda. Well, it's all caps, so it's actually Big Booty Panda! Anywhoozle, it was more of the same. I was the clear leader from the very beginning, slaughtering my way to eternal glory. And by slaughtering, I just mean playing well by hitting my shots when they mattered most. Not so tough now. Big Booty Panda. You know, when I have a definite lead, I always try to do something a little cool with the last kill, but I didn't have access to any interesting weapons, so I guess I just had to bounce a grenade for the win. Hi, right, Cabron, we're playing some more Fiesta in game 89. It was going pretty good from the very beginning. I had five kills before anyone else had any. But then, of course, someone got the fuel rod. Uh. This guy must be used to Candy Crush or something. Anyway, I wanted to put this one away quickly. I wasn't gonna end my 30,000 win streak with Fiesta. We're playing this map again in game 90. I'm a little embarrassed that I don't know most of the names. I mean, there's so many maps at this point, it's hard to keep track of them all. All you really gotta do is hold the high ground and you'll probably be fine. And also, don't rush people when you're one shot. What are you doing? Yep, with the high ground and a sniper, pretty much everyone in the lobby is gonna be at your mercy. And here, I got myself a nice overkill. YOLO Fartboy420 stood no chance. When I noticed this yellow guy saw me and didn't really do anything, I was gonna go stab him. But unfortunately, I didn't get the assassination. Oh well. Well, uh... Whatever. You know, if my mountainous win streak is gonna come to an end, it might as well be in Dino Blasters. I'm 100% sure Bonnie Ross had everything to do with this game mode. Nah, it's cool, Bonnie. We don't even care you took away split screen. I don't hold any blood grudges against you or anything. Well, I definitely lost, but at least I participated. Though I think that guy standing still had more fun than me. We're gonna mix it up and play a little infection in game 92. And as you can tell, it was already going swimmingly. You know, I actually got a lot of kills in that first round, mostly thanks to the zombies being the sprinty type, not the rolly type. I didn't play well in round two or three at all, but I did play so well that I won the game. And now we're gonna play the most Halo map and game type that there is. Big Team Battle on the Blood Gulch remake. I'm telling you guys, when this warthog exploded in front of me, I was just flooded with tons of memories. Likely the most fun aspect of Blood Gulch is using the sniper. These bullets can take the hat off an elite at 2,000 yards. At the end of the day, I was just lucky none of my teammates betrayed me for the sniper. That's a common problem in Halo. I tried to get the final kill with a needler. Why? Because I felt like it. It didn't work anyway. Not sure how, but it took me until game 94 to realize there's a one versus one play List. I'm gonna have some fun with this one. Yep, there's finally a whole playlist dedicated to one verse ones. The only time I remember this happening was one double XP weekend back in Halo 3. Bonnie Ross definitely had nothing to do with this one. Why? Because it's good. You know, after I got my 12th kill against this guy, I figured maybe I could get the perfection. I was diligent, checking my corners and angles, making sure this guy couldn't surprise me. But what I didn't expect was him to spawn behind me. Yeah, that was that was great. He also was able to get a no scope in. I just wanted to show it. I'm proud of him. Oh, he actually kind of got two no scopes in, though that one he had to finish up with the DMR. And in the end, with a nice DMR battle, we killed each other. But of course, I won. We're playing some Headhunter in game 95, and if I'm being honest, I was kind of messing around in this one. If you can score 10 skulls at once, you'll get the Skull Jaro medal, which is just a great name for a medal. I wanted one. It's a little difficult 
difficult though because every time you pick up a skull there's a number above your head and obviously a guy with like seven or eight above his head is going to be a high value target. Not sure how, not sure why, but after picking up only six skulls I got the skull of Manjaro here. I didn't even score him. I don't know why. Anyway, because I was messing around the whole game we of course lost. I still led my team somehow. It definitely wouldn't be a Halo video without some Griff Ball. Griff Ball's kind of like American football but with less concussions. Well, this is actually Blarg Ball but that's because we're elites. It was nice, brought back a lot of memories of boosting this playlist, but this time I actually played to win. Game 97 was gonna be Dino Blasters. Instead, I just decided to leave. If they ban me, so be it. Game 98, we're playing some doubles with a random on the internet. This time, we got Poverty Boys. You could tell we were gonna win just by how many numbers that guy had in his name. Look at that thing, it's like a phone number. I just flat out played well. I didn't do anything too spectacular, but honestly, getting anything over a double kill in doubles is pretty tough. There's only two of them. In the end, we won 25 to 10, and Poverty Boys got the last kill by blowing himself up. I just realized we haven't played a single game of Capture the Flag in this entire hunter drop, so here we go. This is one flag, Capture the Flag, so we're gonna switch off offense and defense, and we play defense the first time. I'm just telling you right now, I'm 100% certain that if my team didn't have me, they would have lost horribly. And when it was our turn to capture the flag, I even had an expert display of skill, getting a triple kill, wiping out the whole team, but our flag carrier didn't know where to go! You know, we could have won this game, but instead we just tied, which is fine, I guess. And this is it, the last one, game 100. We're playing Invasion on my favorite map, but I used my favorite strategy, as you see here. The filthy humans basically had no chance, and I mean, what was this guy even doing? Crouching in the middle of the open? That's never gonna go well. Well done, my brothers. The humans suffer another defeat today. We skunked him in the first round. Now all we had to do to win was take the first objective, and we pretty much did that without thinking. But before I even knew it, one of our guys captured the core, and we won game 100. I got 17 kills, and I never die. A bootleg perfection. It doesn't count an invasion. And that's it for the video, Halo fans. I hope you enjoyed it. You definitely waited long enough. I think the Master Chief Collection and Halo Reach coming to Steam is one of the best things to happen to Halo in a very long time. And I definitely enjoyed myself dropping Halo Reach 100 times. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. At this point, it could be another Halo one. Thank you all for watching. Please stay notable, and I'll see you in the next video.